Good afternoon. I would like to welcome all of you to Holy Spirit Catholic Community. It is great to have you with us as we celebrate today this 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrants this evening are Father Henry, assisted by Deacon Scott. Please leave your donations in the basket on the table as you leave the chapel. Our donations are down. At the live streamed masses, we would also encourage those at home to mail in their donations or bring them to the large outdoor mailbox at the office. How to leave the church after mass. The priest and deacon will be exiting to the sacristy after mass to avoid more exposure at this time. Please wait for the ushers to direct you to leave your pew, beginning with the pews at the back to more easily manage our safe distancing. The roof on the St. Anthony Chapel needs to be replaced. The cost of replacing this roof is $60,000. We currently have $30,000 raised. The Catholic Extension has offered us a matching grant of $15,000. If you are able to help at all to help us reach this goal of the $15,000, please use one of the matching fund envelopes or on your check in the memo line put for roof repair. Today we pray for the repose of the soul of Marty Blick. Please stand as we greet Father Henry and Deacon Scott. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, before we continue with our celebration, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the author of our faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in highest. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, 
you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew you with the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things nor future things, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. 
The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. This is one of my favorite gospel passages. The miracle of feeding the multitude was evidently one of the most cherished stories among early Christians as well, because it is recorded in all four gospels. I think it's the only miracle story that is recorded in all four gospels. There are other stories that appear in all four, but of the miracles, I think this is the only one. And it's easy for us to enjoy this story and reflect upon Jesus' power, his power to feed us, to focus exclusively upon him. And it's easy to miss the message in this gospel about us. This scripture packs a discipleship punch if we have ears to hear it. The apostles initially say to Jesus, this is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Basically, the apostles are saying to Jesus, we can't feed the people. We don't have enough stuff. Isn't it great that the apostles sound just like a parish in 2020? Think about it. We, too, have followed Christ searching for him in the remote place that is Pocatello in Chubbuck. And like the apostles, sometimes we tell ourselves that we don't have what it takes to minister to the multitude in Bannock County. But Jesus replies to the apostles, and he replies to all of us, give them some food yourselves. He tells the apostles and us that we can and must minister to our people. Give them some food yourselves. Jesus doesn't care if all we have is five loaves and two fish. The little that we have can be more than enough to fulfill Christ's mission when our gifts are offered up to the Father just like the gifts of bread and wine at the Mass. Jesus takes the five loaves and the two fish in our Gospel today and, looking up to heaven, blesses them, then breaks them, and gives them to his apostles to distribute. That is the exact pattern of the Mass. We learn from our Gospel today that the scant ministry resources we have as a community 
can become not just sufficient, but abundant when they are taken to God to be blessed, broken, and distributed. Jesus says to us, feed them yourselves, because our ability to serve is about what Jesus can do in us, what Jesus can do through us. We don't have to know everything already. We don't have to have done everything already. We just need to be willing, willing to follow Jesus to the remote places where he will feed the people. We just need to desire the food that is Christ himself. We just need to share with others what God has shared with us. Our Pope recently contributed to a new document from the Vatican concerned with the parish. And when I say recently, it came out 12 days ago. It's called The Pastoral Conversion of the Parish Community in the Service of the Evangelizing Mission of the Church. It has a long title, but basically it's about how a parish should be converted, how a parish should become a missionary outpost in the world today. And in that document, Pope Francis asks us all to think about how the parish might reach even more deeply into our local world. Noticing that people today are often isolated and remote from others and coming to the parish church less often, that is to say people are coming to the parish church less often, Francis, Francis invites us to trust in Christ and to recognize that Jesus often performs miracles in remote places. Pope Francis says, Jesus does not tire of saying to us, give them something to eat. How will we reach those who no longer look for faith? How will our scant gifts be enough to feed the hungry? We just simply need to bring the little that we have to Jesus, who will take it, bless it, break it, and distribute it. All it takes is our faith in the risen Lord, faith that believes and trusts that Jesus can be miraculous even now, even in our mo most remote places. We need to be fed by Christ in word and sacrament and then let ourselves be sent. Just say yes. Just say amen to the miracle that you are and the miracle Jesus will work through you. It begins with your amen to the miracle Jesus will work on this altar tonight. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God from not made.
Mindful of God's promise that we will delight in rich fare, we present our prayers with trust in God's faithfulness. That church leaders, stewards of our faith, will live in a way that will draw all believers to know Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. That the world's government authorities will work together in the cause of global peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For those most susceptible to the coronavirus, that God will protect them from illness and surround them with the peace of knowing that they are loved and cared for beyond measure. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, That all who share pastoral gifts of hospitality be blessed with patient and loving hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, That our parish will grow in faith and respect for all believers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Loving God, we lovingly thank you for the everlasting covenant. We bring our prayers in the name of Jesus, our hope, and our peace. Please be seated as we prepare the gifts. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual dream. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we pray that you sanctify these gifts and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Marty, whom you had called from this life to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace with a simple bow. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please stand.
Today is the day of San Alfonso Maria Ligorio, who was a bishop who helped people immensely, and he was very intense about serving the needs of people. And at that time, there were not that many priests around to give Holy Communion to people, so he, he wrote this beautiful prayer. It's called a Spiritual Prayer of Communion. It's, it's asking Jesus to go and be with, with us, even if we don't receive it sacramentally. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oración espiritual de comunión. Creo, Jesús mío, que estás real y verdaderamente en el cielo y en el santísimo sacramento del altar. Os amo sobre todas las cosas y deseo vivamente recibirte dentro de mi alma. Pero no pudiendo hacerlo ahora sacramentalmente, venid al menos espiritualmente a mi corazón. Y como si ya os hubiese recibido, os abrazo y me uno del todo a ti. Señor, no permitas que jamás me aparte de ti. Amen. Let us pray. A company with constant protection, O Lord, does you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, made them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> With the present rotation that we have between Father Constance and myself, I am only able to see you, those who come to the five o'clock, eight o'clock, or 11 o'clock, every three weeks. So today I want to say the same thing I've been saying in the other two masses, at eight and 11. You probably heard the announcement that the collection um, is down, that we are not getting quite as much as we used to get in before the COVID. But at the beginning of this, we were getting 90, 85 percent. Now we are down to 60 or less. And with 60 or less, I think we are going to have to fire the priest. <laughs> and so that we can make it. I, I, I recommended last weekend saying, you know, if you give $10 and you write the check for $10, put $2 more. That's all we need at this time. Because there are many families who are not coming and they they, they don't have the, the routine to give, so the burden is going to be bear by those who come. Two more dollars is all I am asking for, so that we are able to make those 60 or 70 thousand dollars that we are not going to make this year. And, uh, and you probably are going to hit me with a two by four in my head because we are beginning to put a new roof next week in this church and say, you don't have money, how come you had money for the roof? We're trusting in God. <laughs> so we have $30,000 raised and uh, Extension Society, which is an uh, organization in the church in the United States that helps parishes that are far away, and they consider Pocatello being far away. And they said, we will give you up to $15,000 if you raise the other 15000 So we began 
a good, uh, we have a good beginning with this program. Last weekend, we have a, a nice donation that makes us only needing 13,500. So now that everybody knows about this project, I hope we can have at the end of July, August, the necessary funds to pay the man who come to do the work. I have to make a confession to you. I have become an enabler <laughs> to my mother to break the protocols of COVID. In Colombia, people who are 70 or older cannot go not even an hour a week. So my mother is going crazy. So I, I tried to help her to go at least to the mountains to, so that she loves so much. So every time I have an opportunity to ask a friend, can you take my mother? And they spend time with her. So she is now presently enjoying this uh, seven days of, of the fresh air in the mountains, although she is breaking the law. <laughs> So, so we, God forgive me, for, but I think at 94, she needs to have some little gusto, something that made her heart sing. And I think we all need that at this time of the uh, pandemic. Pan Say that? Pandemic? Okay, uh, that's all for right now. Uh, don't don't uh, believe that we are not going to be able to do it. We will be able to do it. The gospel today talks about the multiplication of fish and loves. And then here we can think about the multiplication of the efforts of many to go to this uh, project, the roof. Father, stay there for just a moment. We are so grateful that he came out of retirement four or five years ago to come back here and be with us. And he's done so much. His, his vision of remodeling has been fabulous. He has an eye for architecture and art. And Friday is his birthday. So if everyone would stand up, let's sing a blessing over him, because prayer is the best gift we can give. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the soon 72 and today I was fixing the inner tube of my bicycle because last night I couldn't go out for a bicycle ride and my niece who is very attentive to what I do and she saw me working this with this uh, inner tube she said do you know do you know how to do that <laughs> can I help you and so I'm still able to do some things. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.